this talk is on a much higher layer than the previous one, so we go up and down. Um, I'm a communication information theorist, uh, so it's, it's uh, pretty high, I would say, uh, high up in the layers. Um, um, this is a joint work with um, uh, Eric Agrell from uh, Chalmers and uh, uh, collaborators uh, uh, from UCL, We're from the Unlock um, team. Um, and this talk is, is about uh, coding. So the, what I'm going to be talking about is, is how to predict the, the bit rate after the coding, after um, forward or correct, uh, correction in optical systems. Um, so the, the way, the way um, this is usually done, uh, what I call standard practice number one, is, is to use the prefect VR threshold. This is how we call it. And the, word, the, the way this, this works is as follows. You say after um, your decoder, you want to have a bit rate of, say, 10 to the minus 15. You, so you fix your what we call post-fake BR um, to, to your target level. Then you simulate a um, family of codes. Um, you make a table, something like this, where you say um, you have different code rates or different overheads. Um, and for a given uh, code rate, you say to achieve 10 to the minus 15 after the coding, 1.44 in this case is, is enough. So you have an input output relationship, postfect BAR characterized by prefect BR. You do this once, you, you have this table, you publish it or you print it, you bring it to your lab. And next time you run a different experiment, a different simulation, um, you go to, to, your lab, to your lab or to your simulation, measure the prefect BR, say it was 8.33, 8 then you come to this table and say, well, there is a code with 11.11% .11 overhead that can bring that bit rate down to 10 to the minus 15. We're all good, we don't simulate the code, and we're happy, right? Especially if we don't know much about coding, this is, this is standard practice. Um, so the assumption here is that the post-fake BR, the BR after the coding, is, is fully characterized by the prefect BR, and, and no matter what happens in between the encoder and the decoder, that is the channel um, that you have in between, um, you're perfectly fine predicting post-fake BR based on prefect BR, and that's perfectly fine if your, dec your decoder is a hard decision FEC. Um, so what happens if we have soft decision FEC, which, is, um, which are codes that um, where at the receiver you don't pass bits as you the caller, but you pass soft information, soft bits. That is LDPC codes, um, turbo codes, any of the modern codes that are the ones that we're mostly interested in this, these days. So um, how do we predict post BR when we have a soft decision, for example, LDPC code? Um, there is a standard practice number two, which I call the SD effect threshold. Um, and, and essentially, these are pictures from OFC last year, randomly taken. You see this horizontal line um, that is called SD effect threshold. So for example here, this is the last one, 20% SD effect. And this is standard practice. So you go to the lab, you measure your prefect BR, and you say if your prefect BR is below this number, there is a soft decision FEC that with 20% overhead that can correct um, um, your, your this prefect BR and bring it down to 10 to the minus 15 or whatever your post BR target is. This is what is currently being done. It's, as I call it, it's a standard practice. It's, um, it's, it's widely used. And the question um, here is, does it work? Can we do that? Can we do this? Are we allowed to do this? Uh, well, the answer is no. The answer is if you have a soft decision FEC using what we call the SD effect threshold paradigm, it's simply incorrect. And in the next slides, I'll try to, one, convince you that this is true, that you should not be using this, and two, also tell you what you should be doing instead. So um, here's an example to see if I can convince you. Um, simulated um, turbo codes um, for QPSK and different code rates. So this is very high overhead, this is low um, overhead. And say you want to guarantee this post BR, 
you measure your prefect br here and you say well i can this code with this overhead will give me that postfect br um, and you did this for QPSK, and then you want to say something about 256 one because you know you got a new setup in your lab, and you you want to use a different modulation format. So can we say something about 256 one? Yes. If you use this paradigm, what you're going to say is, well, I measure in the lab this value for 256 one, so I can use this code um, to guarantee this postfect br. You're going to claim your spectral efficiency to be, well, the number of bits per symbol times the, the coding rate. You're going to say, oh, 2.56 bits per, per symbol or bits per second per hertz um, is possible without implementing the, the code. If you would actually do the experiment or the simulation with 256 QAM, you're going to get these results, the crosses, which basically means that if you measure the same prefect BR, um, you can actually use a higher code rate. So in reality, the true spectral efficiency that you would have achieved if you would have simulated the whole thing um, is 20% um, larger than what you thought it was. Um, what are the um, implications of this? Well, um, record experiments uh, where they use exactly the same approach and they claim uh, certain spectral efficiencies um, <laughs> might be um, uh, underestimated or overestimated. We don't know. Um, in general, this is the same, same codes. So look at, for example, this code rate. It's the same code simulated um, of, uh, using four different modulation formats. This is postfec versus prefec. The fact that these curves are spread, they're not on top of each other, basically say that postfec BR cannot be predicted based on prefec BR for a soft decision FEC. That's it. Um, right. So this is the setup. We, we, we run some simulations to, to show that you can do better. Um, standards, it's a single span system, uh, 11 WDM channels, LDPC codes, nothing, nothing strange. Uh, we looked at four different code rates and, and different modulation formats. Um, and, and we're saying, well, we know what happens with postfect br this, These are the simulated, simula simulation results for this particular code and, and, and a um, WDM system. Uh, you see this spread, right? So the fact that these are not on top of each other means that the postfect br cannot be predicted using prefect br But we're also saying that you can do better at predicting this. And we studied two quantities. One is the mutual information, um, which is this information theory a theoretic quantity that tells you something about the largest achievable rates. And the second quantity is the generalized mutual information, GMI, which is another information, maybe newer information theoretic um, quantity. Um, that those, those two quant quantities can be easily calculated uh, in a simulation or in an experiment. Uh, and we're saying, well, prefect doesn't work. What happens if you do mutual information instead? You see that the curves get a little bit better. They, they get closer together. But it's still not, not fully correct. If you do GMI, however, you see this kind of behavior. Regardless of the coding rate, regardless of the modulation format, you get a match, um, which basically means that by looking at GMI, it's, it's enough if you want to predict postfect BR. You shouldn't be looking at prefect. You shouldn't be looking at mutual information. You should be looking at generalized mutual information. Um, what are the conclusions of this? Well, two conclusions. One, don't use the SD FEC threshold. Do not you know, draw these horizontal lines simply because it doesn't work. And two, use a GMI threshold, which works. Um, so what is this GMI threshold? We, what we, the idea we're putting forward here is, well, fix your target post-FEC post uh, BR, say 10 to the minus 6, 10 to the minus 15, whatever you want. Pick your family of LDPC or turbo codes or any codes you want, simulate them with QPSK, generate a table where you say the, the generalized mutual information that I measure for this particular code rate was this, and with that I can guarantee a postfect BR. Print the table and never simulate your code or never implement a code anymore. Just print it and have it there and go to your lab and whenever you run a different, a different setup, measure the GMI, go to your table, and if your GMI was 0 
rightly claim that there is a code with 20% overhead that can give you the desired PostFig BR. Uh, more information. Um, um, long JLT paper soon to be published, um, available here. Um, we looked at LDPC, tubo codes, Gaussian, non-Gaussian, linear, non-linear regime, simulation, experimental result. Everything seems to, to, uh, to, to be fine. GMI seems to be the right uh, metric. And there's also a lot of theory behind. This is not just a quantity that uh, someone came up with. There's, a, there's an information theoretic background behind this. Uh, more information about you, how you can calculate the GMI, which is this quantity. 